Swamiji, in the Shaivite philosophy, you were uh, the greatest living authority in Shaivism. The yamas and niyamas are important part yes, of this important. philosophy. These are, these are important parts. Very important. Yeah. In the Shaivite philosophy, the final goal, could you say, could you tell me, is it union? What is the final goal of the Shaivite? Final goal of, uh, in Shaivite philosophy is uh, when individual unites with uh, universal consciousness. With the universal consciousness. Yes. And that universal consciousness is God. Is God? It, is it in use all the time, Swamiji? You just uh, have to look for it. No, universal consciousness. Uh, you'll find in in each and every individual, but it is in the background. In the it is in the subsided state at this at this time, when you practice and meditate on on some point explained by your master. Then, by and by, this individuality uh, vanishes in universality. And time comes when univers universal consciousness arises uh, in one's own body. And he experiences that universal consciousness. And that is the state of God experience. But uh, that experience, experiencing that universal consciousness is not direct experience. How do, how, does, how do you even know when you're even approaching something like that, Swamiji? How, what are your signposts on the road? Memory comes in you. Memory. Memory comes in you. Oh, I, wa I, was, I was universal consciousness already, previously. Right. And I didn't know it. I see. This is the sign of that experience. Memory of past things. You feel. At the, at, the, at the time of rising of that universal consciousness in you, you feel uh, there is memory. Uh, as if you've been there before, that, as yeah, if you have felt yeah, there yeah, before. Yes. Let's see. Yes. S Swamiji, this super conscious state that you, you kind of recognize, when it hits you, you think, oh, I felt this before. Then what happens? Then what are the signs for a man? Or a woman into yoga like that. What what do they what do they watch for? What do, where do they go from they there? They don't watch. They feel that that consciousness, God consciousness, uh, as the flood and fountains fountains of excess of joy, happiness, happiness. No, not it is super sexual joy. A sexual happiness. It is it is not uh, individual sexual joy. It is super sexual joy. I say hundred thousand million times more dense joy than that sexual joy. And it and it continues a long time. It continues time. long time and it flows. Flows in each and every vein of your body. You are intoxicated with that bliss. And and you just feel but it over and hours and hours or days? No. No, it, it remains only for three or four seconds, and the rest of life is in terms of this. The rest of your life is affected by that? If it remains, according to the theory of Abhinavgupta, if it remains for uh, one hour, then you, this body won't exist. You die. Only, yes. You die. You, die. Yeah, you yeah. cannot sustain. You cannot tolerate. You cannot tolerate that intensity of joy in this limited body. You have to throw this. Shatter this. Have one with the divine. Like super sexual joy. It's just such a tremendous joy state. Do yogis go into this feeling when they die? Is this what death is to a yogi? Yes. That's why they don't fear yes. it. They love it. They love death. <laughs> they love they death. They love death. 